Hello everyone, it's Pavlo. I'm glad you all uh, watching my video now and today we'll be talking about yet another interesting earphones. Uh, their price is $180, so it's not super expensive, but at the same time it's not our typical low budget offer. And uh, it's uh, Tenjim Kara. I have really high hopes for this uh, hybrid earphones uh, with one dynamic driver and four balanced armatures because I'm pretty sure that Tanjim uh, proved their uh, possibility to create uh, great design and uh, to tune sound well. Some time ago I reviewed Tanjim Darling, which were really exciting uh, in terms of design and sound. Actually, they are pretty unbelievable uh, in terms of design, if you think that it's a uh, hybrid earphones. And uh, not so long ago you've uh, uh, you've seen my review about Tenjim One, really good uh, budget offering. So today let's talk about not that budget segment and let's find out what we've got here. So here is the package, looks pretty nice with bright polygraphy, with uh, technical specifications listed on the back side and uh, what we've got 115 decibels of sensitivity and 27, 27 ohms of impedance so uh, quite uh, sensitive ones but not critically and inside this box with interesting texture so high attention to the polygraphy also some some booklet with manual and other papers i suppose next we go here think this great looking but not super practical storage pouch earpieces themselves and uh, two set of white white silicone tips i already can foresee the problems i'll have uh, in, during the photo session for this model but this white purity of course looks really attractive and here we're getting cable and actually it's some sticker probably it was used to win the cable in terms of design of course they are great as i've said tenjim can play with materials achieving uh, exquisite results and it's like really common transparent uh, white uh, resin shell but you can see this combination of uh, matte and opaque on the faceplate which makes everything really interesting you can see the bottom part of crossover some resistors on it and uh, it looks fancy and at the inner side you can admire all drivers inside so here is dynamic driver it has like yeah, it has separate uh, sound tube and as you can see it's pretty narrow one and uh, two balanced armatures goes here and it's just uh, metal spout uh, without any filters and one armature goes here with some additional acoustic filters so definitely some tuning work was done here and also here is a pretty big vent hole actually not sure is it for dynamic driver or for the balanced armatures but anyway so inner part is soft smooth it has a pretty long spout so you need to take it into the account when you finding the proper tips for this for this model that you need to select smaller tips than usual because it goes deeper unfortunately there is no lip for holding the tips and there is no protective grill but uh, uh, i don't think that some derbies will go inside of this uh, tiny base tube and actually there is some protective mesh not sure will camera show it or not there is some protective mesh in both spouts so uh, derbies won't fall into your precious earpieces and in general looks nice uh, and thanks to the small size fits uh, really well into ears really unusual design like with just simple plastic they achieved some really great results 
And here is the stock cable, also super bright, silver, so Tanjim stated that uh, they used uh, high purity oxygen, oxygen free copper with silver plating and according to it looks really uh, matching this, this description, so bright, silver, pretty soft, so let's get one side connector used here used regular two pin connectors they are color coded as you can see here is the red one and sockets are a bit recessed uh, but uh, i don't think that uh, it will make some issues with compatibility with other cables so fits nicely and uh, also looks uh, really well there is ear hook formed and the cable itself let me take out this piece so cable itself uh, like uh, softer than average not super soft but on the softer side of things and thanks to this uh, ear hook microphonic effect is really low and here is the splitter with chin slider so everything you can expect from the good cable is here also looks pretty attractive with this uh, silver spirals and uh, under this, uh, after the splitter it goes like in one insulation tube down to the regular 3.5 mm jack so looks pretty fancy in all aspects and of course about the sound i gave them traditional 48 hours of burn in and traditionally there were no significant changes in sound signature after that so just get them and enjoy in terms of tuning, Tanjim decided to make a bit unusual uh, tuning, not like something absolutely unique or something super taste based, no, they just uh, shifted it towards a bit of darker side, maybe because dark side has cookies, and uh, that gives a pleasant result, uh, but let's probably talk about everything step by step. So, bass is accented, it's actually not overdone, it's, it has noticeable accent, and it has maximum depth, it's uh, pretty nicely controlled, so some good dynamic driver here, and as a uh, lot of tradition, a uh, lot of uh, good dynamic drivers, uh, it delivers really balanced bass. So, you don't getting like overwhelmed by low frequencies, main accent is uh, made on mid bass, but uh, deeper layers are also present. They mm, appear when it's necessary to give you rumble but at the same time they're not trying to over dominate and with electronic music you'll get it and with something more natural you'll get uh, less of the deeper bass meaning that it will sound uh, instrument will sound more realistic really good balance of uh, speed way and weight uh, so both good weight and nice punch so pretty enjoyable Nice resolutions, good, maybe not perfect, but pretty good textures and uh, average, uh, slightly above average, probably in saturation with small nuances and details, so pretty universal and enjoyable base. And first example, it's actually Minefields by the Prodigy. Once again, I'm, I want to use it because it's like a good example of deep and rumbling bass. And these earphones deliver it, you fear that uh, rumble, but at the same time it's not like over dominating like in typical bass head tunings. And uh, the second example is uh, Blues Company, If I Only Could. And, as name suggests, it's classical guitar blues uh, with nice tune, with uh, traditional for blues genre vocal, and also they have nice well-recorded uh, drums that uh, like moved pretty forward in the mix, and these earphones deliver it uh, well with all nuances, and actually they deliver it as a bit uh, pushed forward as, uh, as it was the idea of uh, mixing engineers. Mid frequencies are recessed uh, compared to the bass, 
but actually they are balanced armatures and uh, that gives us uh, good level of detailization so uh, mid frequencies are not being lost compared to the lows but of course still it's like not absolutely natural or monitoring tuning it's not uh, earphones to focus on the small and tiny detail but actually resolution on mids is good uh, they are not just they just not trying to be super sharp and focused on the micro contrast uh, to give you a bit more relaxed uh, uh, representation being more musical and enjoyable but i must admit once again the details are nice like overall balance is not absolutely natural but it's just the idea of tuning of these earphones it actually doesn't make them bad, like uh, some people trying to say. It's just uh, tuning created for those who like a bit uh, warmer and relaxed signature that some people really enjoy. Imaginary stage is above average in width and in depth, not huge, uh, but uh, pretty normal and well built. Actually, width is slightly bigger than depth. I like here emotion representation and I like uh, also pretty nice dynamics. They're not trying to compensate weight in the record, so they require uh, material with proper weight distributed for the instruments. Of course, they have a bump in the upper mids, but it's not big, that big compared to typical, so they're giving a bit of extra spice for the female vocal, violins and other instruments but also it's not uh, like not at the level as it usually does and uh, subjectively you know i prefer such signature because uh, giving that uh, big spike in this area it's engaging but uh, it gets fatiguing uh, after some time so this model is comfortable but not like soft comfortable just not being over overly forward and first example for the mids it's the doors people are strange actually uh, i think that this so song should start playing autom automatically when you enter reddit and anyway you know the doors always surprised me because like if you take every aspect separately it would be like just okay so Nice, interesting, catchy tunes, yes, so great thing, but it's not unique. Uh, there were a lot of uh, bands that day that also create nice and catchy tunes. Uh, Morrison vocal, also it's unusual, some interesting uh, tracks, but uh, at that time we've had a uh, lot of uh, unusual vocalists, a lot of uh, spiritual young men, uh, but of course they were not as talented poets as Morrison, but anyway you can get vocalist. So, but uh, taking everything together we getting absolutely unique group that uh, created uh, just few masterpieces, but they uh, stand out from the rest of the crowd, at least for me, and uh, that's absolutely surprising me. I really suppose that I expressed my thought because sometimes I am failing in that and instead uh, I'm expressing something totally different. But okay, people are strange, like signature vocal, uh, good tunes, uh, pretty uh, spacious mix and these earphones deliver that all in a pretty uh, good way. And second example, like more complicated one in terms of representation. And uh, of course, uh, Kara lacking a bit of technicality to fully uh, to fully present this track, but it's Dream Theater, Peruvian Skies. It's just field of uh, guitars, keyboards, drums, vocal, everything. Lot of you you heard Dream Theater, so no need to explain. Introduction part is great, and uh, it sounds uh, pretty nice. But later then, actually, I'd prefer a bit more treble extension to show the uh, full uh, decays of the percussions. And also I'd like a bit less bass guitar, because bass boost is here is noticeable, so it's uh, a bit over highlighting that. But still pretty enjoyable experience anyway. 
and uh, treble actually it's pretty good uh, at lower treble and a bit of mid treble but uh, high treble here is noticeably recessed and uh, in general it makes sense not like with some some audiophiliac recordings or something like that but with modern music that is mastered and mixed directly for the streaming services for the lossy compression it's a good thing because you uh, don't hear that uh, issues and also treble here is not as accented as it would be in classical v-shaped models so bass is a bit um, more forward compared to the treble and uh, that gives you like more relaxed treble representation but at the same time thanks to good balanced armatures treble is like uh, is detailed and uh, shows really good overtone saturation but it's a bit more relaxed for those who don't like uh, spikeness and harshness so examples examples are worth the, the thousand worlds words so king crimson starless uh, actually good example where this earphones lacks uh, layering and lacks extension but you know to fully uh, play treble of this track you'll need something like one thousand dollars range plus minus of course because uh, at that range you getting like absolutely good and uh, uh, effortless layering and stuff like that. Uh, despite of uh, li uh, lacking extension, basic overtones are really good. So you getting uh, you losing a bit of that airness, but still you getting all overtones and uh, instruments uh, richness. So nice results. And another example for my <laughs> French speaking uh, viewers. Uh, of course, I'm joking. It's uh, Serion uh, in 2013, if I remember right, they decided to release an album in French and uh, they named it uh, Fleur de Mal and actually it's just cover versions of uh, some famous uh, French music and Mon Amour, Mon Ami is not an exception. It starts in a slow way with a really uh, high-pitched female vocal and minimal accompaniment and actually their uh, earphones deliver good amount of details and overtones then late uh, tune became harder and harder vocal became uh, more and more aggressive and actually they still staying on the comfortable side of uh, treble not being overly forward Speaking about the comparisons, they definitely, oh sorry, for, about the pairings, uh, they definitely need uh, some good source to show their full potential, so they need something controlled and not overly warm. And uh, about the comparisons, honestly, can't recall anything similar, similar uh, with similar tuning. Like Eco OH10, it has a bit more bass, but at the same time, it has a bit more forward treble that compensates that. Fios uh, uh, FD3, it's like a bit more V shaped with a bit less resolution on the mids and also a bit brighter in the treble area. So, I haven't heard a lot of models that are popular now, so I can do like. <laughs> not outdated comparison but in general i think that these earphones uh, can match a lot of tastes because i often been asked by people about some nice earphones with uh, mm, uh, like slightly relaxed signature and that's a good example they are relaxed not 100 percent like uh, natural but uh, really really enjoyable and still showing a really good uh, technicality so interesting model i really recommend you to try them thank you for listening thank you for your attention and of course have a great day